Hello, how are you doing? Dysphasia, dysphagia, dysphonia, dysarthria. I'm, I'm feeling in a helpful mood. There are these four words that often crop up and students struggle to remember what they mean because not only do they sound the same, but they all relate to this area. They're involved with speech in different ways or swallowing, um, but they're quite different and they're importantly different. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take each one in turn, in turn, <laughs> and talk about each term, and then talk about what anatomy is not working in each case, and a bit of Greek and Latin, okay? We'll take them one at a time, and we'll see why they seem similar. Um, first of all, if we split all those words apart, we've got dis, and then we've got something else like phonia, or phagia, or phasia, or arthria. So the dis uh, means difficult, difficulty, you know, so this is a, a Greek origin. Um, we'll see that one of those words doesn't use dis anymore, it uses a, but I'm making it more complicated already, aren't I? So if we take the first word, dysphonia, dis means difficulty, phonia, uh, comes from the ancient Greek word meaning uh, sound, gramophone, telephone, right? So there's a difficulty in making sound. And that's a really important definition because that's what the problem is in this case. Here is the larynx and the airway, the trachea and the bronchi. Um, I'm making sound by moving my vocal cords. So there's the tube I'm blowing air out through. And inside there, we've got the vocal cords. Oh, I can show you those on this mid-sagittal section. So here's the airway again, there's the larynx. There are the vocal cords, and uh, you have muscles that move your vocal cords. So when you're breathing normally, your vocal cords are wide apart. Makes sense, let air in and out, right? But if you want to make sound, you bring the vocal cords closer together so the air that you push out through that airway makes the vocal cords vibrate, right? If you are having difficulty making sound with your vocal cords, you, you might have a hoarse voice. You've probably experienced this. Um, if you've had inflammation in your larynx, laryngitis, you know, if you've had an infection around there, if you've been at a loud music concert or a football, a really annoying football match, and you've been shouting really loudly for a long period of time, you may also have inflamed the mucosa around your vocal cords. You probably had a hoarse voice afterwards, right? That's dysphonia. It's a temporary dysphonia. It comes back again. I tend to get this every Monday if I talk all day, teaching quite loudly. The next day, I, I don't have a hoarse voice, but it, it's, I don't have the same voice quality, but it recovers over a few days. Now, if you were somebody that had had thyroid surgery and it had accidentally, inadvertently damaged one of these nerves, these are the recurrent laryngeal nerves, which are innervating the intrinsic muscles of the larynx that move the vocal cords. So if that surgery had injured a recurrent laryngeal nerve on one side, you would not be able to move both your vocal cords. You'd only be able to move one on one side, which means you would not be able to bring your vocal cords into that perfect position to force air over and make them vibrate. So you would have a hoarse voice. You'd have dysphonia. Um, and that then is a long-term, that's like a permanent dysphonia. So dysphonia, a difficulty in making sound, phone, phonia. Right, that's number one. Dysarthria. All right, that's a tricky one. Dis again, so difficulty. Arthria. Now we know arth because arthritis, inflammation of joints, right? Joint pain. So what's that got to do with this end? Um, articulation. So the arthria is, you, you know, it, it's, it's, it is joints, but it's about uh, being articulate. Um, I am attempting to speak clearly. Um, I'm using my tongue and my lips and other muscles of my face, of, uh, muscles of facial expression to carefully articulate words. So I'm using the sound that my vocal cords are making, but beyond that, I am speaking clearly. If I was unable to speak clearly, 
I would have dysarthria. My, my voice might be slurred. My words would not be clear. So this then is to do with the muscles around here or the nerves that innervate the muscles around here or the bits of the brain that control the muscles around here. But anyway, dysarthria then is a difficulty in controlling the tongue to make clear articulate speech or difficulty moving the muscles of the face to make clear articulate speech. Um, so the tongue is innervated by cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. So if that's injured, you may have dysarthria. Uh, the muscles of facial expression that are moving my lips uh, the nerve that innervates those guys is the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. So if that nerve was injured, Bell's palsy is a, um, a, a famous, an infamous condition affecting um, the facial nerve and the muscles of facial expression on one side. If I couldn't move those muscles, I might have dysarthria. But also then, um, further up the chain, if the parts of the brain that control those muscles are not working. So uh, I think, well, stroke... Um, uh, an MCA stroke, middle cerebral artery stroke, tends to affect the somatosensory cortex and the motor cortices, right? The motor cortices are controlling the muscles of the body on the other side. Uh, so a stroke can cause dysarthria. Uh, movement disorders like Parkinson's disease will um, likely develop dysarthria because it's difficult to control those movements. Um, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, um, head trauma damaging the brain directly. So dysarthria is a difficulty in speaking clearly, but it's because it's a difficulty in moving the muscles of the tongue and the face accurately to make clear speech, dysarthria. Number three, dysphasia. Except it's, it's not often called dysphasia. But it is sometimes, which is why I mention it, because I'm trying to clear up any confusion. This is more commonly referred to as aphasia. A, oh, without. So dis is difficulty, a is without. Phasia uh, means speech. Phasia comes from an ancient Greek word meaning utterance, speech really, right? But how is aphasia or dysphasia different to what we were just talking about. Here's the clue, it's, it's in the brain. Um, language is something very, very special. In most people, there are two areas on the left side of the cerebral cortex that are responsible for the comprehension of language and the production of language. So aphasia isn't an inability to produce sound, it isn't an inability to control the muscles of the tongue or the mouth. It's an inability to produce language or comprehend language. So this is a, a higher central problem. Aphasia is not a disorder of intelligence. It's specifically a disorder of language. And that means it's not just speech um, that's affected, but also reading and writing. So written language... Um, also braille and sign language in the blind and the deaf, um, as well as, you know, spoken language and listening to language. Um, so language is affected in aphasia. It is an acquired condition. So the person did have language and then they lost language. And as it's an injury in the brain, you can imagine that it can be caused by stroke so um, reduced blood flow to those areas of the brain responsible for language. It can be caused by brain trauma. It can be caused by a brain tumour. It can be caused by other neurodegenerative conditions. But that's aphasia or dysphasia. But aphasia really, a loss of um, speech, but really a loss of language. Number four, uh, dysphagia, we're still up here, but we're not talking about speech or making sound or language anymore. Uh, dysphagia is a difficulty in eating. So, phagus, phagus, phag um, I know I'm a bit of an anatomy nerd, but I always remember the macrophage, right? The big eater, macrophage, is a cell that mops up cellular debris and anyway, part of the immune system and stuff like that. Phage 
is eating, so dysphagia, a difficulty in eating. And really what we're talking about here is a difficulty in swallowing. Um, so this is a disorder often of the esophagus, but you've also got all these muscles around here of the pharynx, the pharyngeal constrictors, the longitudinal pharyngeal muscles. You've got the tongue, you've got the soft palate. All of these things work together. I've done a video on swallowing. Um, and the brain organizes the sequence of movements that occur so that you pass a bolus of food to the back of the oral cavity and then you swallow. So dysphagia is a disorder, a difficulty in swallowing. And it's a very important one. Thousands of people die every year um, because they choke on food that they haven't swallowed properly. We have a shared region here. We have a shared airway and a shared foodway. So uh, this is particularly a disorder of the elderly. Swallowing becomes less good as we get older. It's more likely to have problems, more likely to encounter dysphagia. So dysphagia is something that can kill people. Also, um, as part of the swallowing reflex, the, the larynx is, is closed off so the food can't go down the airway so you don't get pneumonia from food that, or objects that have gone down into the airway. So there's, there's kind of a, a double whammy here. So dysphagia is a problem. Uh, and because we've got lots of muscles involved here, we've got a sequence of movements, this can be a disorder uh, within the brain again. So again, dysphagia can be caused by you know, stroke or neurodegenerative disorders. We, we see it associated with dementia and so on. So it can be a brain thing. It can be caused by, there's, you can see how there's not a lot of room down here, right? There's no spare space. So it can be caused by a tumor forming around here in the esophagus or maybe in the larynx affecting these mechanisms around here. It can be caused by mouth cancers as well, actually. So a cancer can cause dysphagia. The esophagus is going to go down to the stomach, and um, as the stomach goes into this, into the, sorry, as the esophagus goes into the stomach, the stomach has stomach acid in it, and that acid is supposed to stay in the stomach. Sometimes it doesn't, and it comes back up into the into the esophagus and irritates the esophagus, and that gastroesophageal reflux disease can also lead to dysphagia. Um, as can some pharmacology, some drugs can also cause dysphagia. So dysphagia is difficulty eating or difficulty swallowing. How's that? Try to have my helpful hat on today. Um, break the word down into its parts. Dis, difficulty. So if I pick any of those words, um, dysphasia or aphasia, phasia, speech in terms of language production. So difficulty in comprehending language or producing language. Uh, phagia sounds very similar, but dysphagia, oh, macrophage, the big eater. Dysphagia is a difficulty swallowing. Dysphagia, phagia, dysarthria, arthria. Oh, that's like arthritis, joints. Oh, articulated speech. So it's using the muscles of the tongue and the mouth to clearly articulate my words. So dysarthria is a disorder of moving these muscles, either a nerve problem or um, the muscles itself, the muscles themselves might be damaged, dysarthria. And the other one was dysphonia. So like a gramophone, like a telephone, you're making sound. So dysphonia is a difficulty making sound. Um, the language seems terribly unhelpful at times, but when you kind of crack the code, it gets easier. But that's the trick, isn't it? Is, is working these things out, then we can be more confident in our, in our recall and in what the term means. Uh, I hope that's helped. I hope that's helped me. I hope I remember it better in the future. Should do, right? Okay, see you uh, next week. <laughs>